Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent. Goal joining you on Thursday, just a couple of days away now from Arsenal returning to Premier League action with that trip to Everton early kickoff on Saturday. Sean Dyche's first game in charge at Goodison. Probably going to make it tougher than it was had Frank Lampard still been in charge. You imagine that, you know, the place is going to be pretty... Pretty bouncing, the atmosphere is going to be pretty intense, certainly early on, given it's Sean Dyche's first game. But you'd hope if Arsenal can take the sting out of that, survive for the first 20 minutes, start to stamp their authority on the game, then they will still have too much for Everton. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that game in this video, look at who could start. Um, other stuff to talk about, Tommy Asu, I've done an interview with Tommy Asu that's just gone live on Goal today. I'll talk a little bit about that interview as well. You can find that on my social media channels if you want to go and have a read of that afterwards. Talks about a lot of stuff, which I'll talk about. We've got to talk about Foller and Balogun as well. What a day for him yesterday. A hat-trick, now the top scorer in France, ahead of Mbappe, Messi, Lacazette, everyone. What a season he's having, so we'll talk about him and uh, and that's about it. So let's start with that trip to Edison, uh, Edison, <laughs> Everton, shall we, on Saturday. As I said, Everton in a bit of disarray, you would call it at the moment. But they do have a new manager in charge. We know what can, that can bring. We know the whole new manager bounce um, theory that does around. I actually had a look at that in terms of Arsenal coming up against new managers and they don't have a bad record of that against it. I think they've only lost once in the last 20 years in the Premier League when they've come up against a team playing under a new manager for the first time and that was against West Ham at home on the opening day. I think the 2016 season when Slavan Bilic's West Ham did it. So that even, the fact that that was the opening game of the season, it wasn't like it was midway for a season and the manager just comes in and turns a struggling team around. He'd had a whole pre-season. So that kind of doesn't even count, I don't think. So Arsenal tend to do pretty well in these situations when they do come up against it. And as I said, you would hope, given the way Arsenal are playing, the confidence they've got, the quality that they've got, that they'll be able to take the sting out of the crowd, which will be up. We know that they'll definitely be more intense than they would normally because of the fact that Sean Dyche's air will be introduced to the crowd before kickoff and all that sort of thing. Um, but having said all that, there's still a lot of unrest at Everton. They're still really angry. They didn't sign anyone on deadline day. They let Anthony Gordon go for 40 million. They're struggling. They didn't sign a single player in January. So there's still a lot of anger. It's not like Dyche has come in and transformed the atmosphere around the, the place at all. There's still going to be a lot of anger towards the club, towards the board, towards the ownership. I think if Arsenal can just take the sting out of things in the first 15, 20 minutes, quieten the crowd down a bit, get on top, I think they get themselves in front and that crowd will soon turn again. And uh, it will be a pretty hostile place for Everton to play in rather than Arsenal. So we'll have to see how it goes. I mean, who could start for it? I think we know the team. Jorginho's obviously arrived um, since the last Premier League game. And I imagine he'll certainly be involved at, uh, at the weekend. He'll be in the squad and probably make, might well make his debut. But I imagine if he does, it'll be from the bench. I cannot. I'd be very, very surprised if Jorginho goes straight into the starting eleven. Uh, I imagine he will be on the bench, same as Kivior and uh, probably Trossard as well. So all three new January signings, I expect, will probably start the game on the bench because if everyone's fit and you know no one's got any injuries we know about, and you know most importantly, Thomas Partey is okay to play in this one, having gone off against Manchester City in the FA Cup, um, then I think we know what the team's going to be, isn't it? It's going to be Ramsdale and goal. It's going to be Ben White. Um, uh, Saliba, Gabriel, Zinchenko, Party, Odegaard, Xhaka, Saka, Nketiah, Martinelli. I, I'd be very surprised if that isn't a starting eleven. You never know. Mikel might try something new. He might bring in Trossard and give Trossard a start a, a start in the Premier League for the first time. But I think I'd be very surprised. I think that people have been pointing the finger a little bit at Martinelli in recent games, saying, "Oh, he's not he's not playing as well as he was. Is it time for a rest?" You know, I think that's very very harsh. I think Martinelli still starts. Um, at the weekend and like I said all three new signings will probably be on the bench and that bench, bench will look an awful lot stronger than it has in recent times it'll be interesting to see if Emil Smith-Rowe is on it hopefully is I hope this injury that he picked up that's ruled him out of the FA Cup game against Manchester City isn't anything too serious it was it was described as precautionary at first hopefully that is the case and we'll see him back on the bench because uh, we, we need to get Smith-Rowe fit fully fit and uh, ready to go during the second half of the season Okay, so Tommy Asu. I've done an interview with Tommy Asu. It's gone live today. I've tweeted it out on my social media channels. You can go and find that on Twitter. It's on the goal uh, homepage at the moment as well. Exclusive interview with Tommy Asu talking about a wide range of stuff. 
uh, talking about Arsenal's brilliant start to the season, talking about mainly what sort of changed at Arsenal, what has been the big difference from this season, from last season. Uh, we talk about him losing his place in the side to Ben White, his title dreams. I asked him, the, the one player he's so happy he doesn't have to play against at the weekend. We were talking about Arsenal training and how intense it was. And I, and I asked him, you know, who's the one player that you're really, really happy you don't have to face? And he said straight away, while laughing, Gabriel Martinelli. He said he just never stops, just constantly he's always trying to make something happen and he's very happy he doesn't have to face him it was weird I, I kind of knew that was what he was going to say as well we can, whenever you speak to Arsenal players about training and who's who's the best in it who just never stops working and everyone says Martinelli just an absolute animal by all accounts um, but I thought a really interesting thing was when I kind of asked him you know what has changed how have Arsenal got into this position from last season we could see there was doing well there was progress being made but what has made them take this monumental leap forward this season and he said we understand more about Mikel's football we've got depth we've got some new players but the biggest thing is we understand Mikel's football more than last season last season we understood but we couldn't express it this season we understand are we and we are showing how he wants us to play that is a big difference I thought it was really interesting that from Tommy Asu the amount of people you speak to who have played under Guardiola. And I remember doing an interview with Bakary Sanya not too long ago. And he said this to me as well, and you've heard other people say it as well. He said it took him, Sagna that is, and this is a really experienced player, obviously, it took him a year to adjust to Guardiola's demands and what he wanted to and really understand what he wanted. And, you know, he's not the only player who's played that, who said that. A lot of players have. And if, and uh, and I put that to Tommy Astro as well. I, I said that to him and he said he absolutely agreed. He, think, he says, you kind of you know what the manager wants, you know what Arteta wants, but actually putting into action and getting used to it and being able to do it on the pitch, it takes an awful long time to really, truly understand it. And now they do understand it. And he thinks that is a big difference um, this season that's really driving this dramatic change in fortune, fortunes for Arsenal. Like I said, there's plenty more that we talk about in the interview, so go and have it, give it a read. Uh, if you can, it's a good, uh, I'd like to say it myself, it's a decent interview, decent read. And um, yeah, I thought it was really good when he was talking about losing his place to Tommy Asu, uh, to Ben White as well. You know, a real sort of great attitude there. And I think it's kind of the hallmark of what has made Arsenal really successful as well this season is that squad unity, the de determination to play for each other and not think about themselves as individuals, but think about themselves about a team. And I think it really comes across in Tommy Asu's interview. And um, and so, yeah, if you'll find it, like I said, it's on my Twitter at the moment. You can go and find a link there or you find it on goal.com as well. Um, Balogun. Follower in Balogun. I'm sure you've seen it yesterday. The hat trick he scored. Brilliant penalty. Lovely right foot finish. Brilliant left foot finish for the, for the hat trick goal. Kind of memories of... Um, Robin Van Persie, not as good as Van Persie's goal against Everton when Alex Song played that ball over the top, but it had, it, it reminded me of it. It was more of a sort of side-footed finish than Van Persie's was, but, um, you know, still a fantastic goal for him. And he's a top scorer in League One now. He's moved ahead of Mbappe, he's moved ahead of Lacazette, he's way ahead of Messi, um, Neymar and co. And it's just a brilliant story what Balogun's enjoying this year and Arsenal made the absolute right decision in not bringing him back in January I saw people calling for him to come back it's like no just leave him be let him be where he is at the moment let him continue to develop it would be just awful for the way he's playing the confidence he's got to suddenly bring him back in January and barely and him sit on the bench for the rest of the season so I'm really happy Arsenal have left him where he is and this is just turning into a absolute worldy of a loan spell that um, even I imagine Arsenal wouldn't have expected beyond their wildest dreams when they sent him over there at the start of the season. It was a brave move for him. He had a good loan spell at Middlesbrough last season, but didn't score that many goals. He played well. He was popular. He was popular there, but he didn't score too many goals. He had some chances. He didn't take them. And I think the difference this year clearly is his confidence now is absolutely sky high. And you look at the finishes yesterday, both first time finishes, you know, just a, a striker full of confidence. And, um, you know, you're already thinking, well, you sort of look ahead to the summer and think, Arsenal oh, got a big decision to make when it comes to Balogun in the summer. What do you do? Do you use him? Do you integrate him now into the first team at the end of the season? But if you do, how many opportunities is he going to get? Obviously, Jesus is going to be there. And Ketia is proving himself as a, you know, very much a Premier League striker now. So what happens with Balogun? If you bring him back, is he going to be third choice? Is he going to barely play next season? Will that be good for his development? Do you move him on? Uh, do you move him back out on loan again and really see if he can kick on and have a, another successful loan spell? Probably this time in the Premier League rather than send him out abroad, really test him in the Premier League. Or do you think this is probably the 
the highest his value is ever going to be? Do we do we sell? You know, there's a lot, there's a big decision to make when it comes to Valley. I, mean, I, I don't know if I'd want them to sell, but that must be a serious consideration, you'd think, given the form he's in and what his value would be. And you know, if he comes back, if he doesn't have a good loan spell next season, if he doesn't really play much at Arsenal, if he stays, it, his value is just going to drop massively. So it's a big decision to make. It'll be really interesting to see what they do. I mean, I'd love to see him come back to Arsenal and really put a marker down and really start pushing Jesus and Nketiah uh, to try and get in a side because he's clearly got so much talent and he's so strong, his finishing is excellent, his movement's great, he's calm in front of goal, you look back at that finish against PSG um, at, at the weekend, the way he took it in injury time, you know, there was no nerves, he was so calm and composed, you know, he's got so many good facets to his game and um, yeah, it'd be really interesting to see what he's done, but I just can't wait to see what he's going to do between now and the end of the season. Can he get himself to 20 goals in the season? That would be a remarkable achievement from Balogun. But let me know what you guys think in terms of how he's doing and what you think the future should hold uh, for Balogun, whether it be at Arsenal or elsewhere. Uh, okay, before I go today, the Player of the Month award. I just wanted to talk about this. Arsenal put it out today, the Player of the Month award for January. This is a interesting one the four candidates for player of the month Nketiah Zinchenko Ramsdale and Odegaard now obviously Nketiah has got four goals in four games in January he scored the two crucial goals against Manchester United the equaliser and the last minute winner he scored twice against Oxford as well um I thought he played very well in the games against Tottenham um wasn't didn't really do too much didn't uh, against Manchester City but in the, in the cup but um so he's I, I imagine Nketiah is probably going to get it but personally, I'd give it to Zinchenko, I have to say, this month. I think Zinchenko, in those two performances against Tottenham and against Manchester United, was so impressive. They were so good that I know he didn't score the goals, but he did put the uh, he did pretty much set up the winner against uh, against United. I just think the level of his performance in those two games, what he did in them, the way he set the tone... I just think for me, he was he was my player of the month this month. But let me know. I'm sure plenty of you will probably disagree with that. But let me know. So the four contenders, you can go and vote for it now on the Arsenal website, uh, are Inketia, Zinchenko, Ramsdale and Odegaard. Who is your player of the month for January? Let me know, as always, in the comments below. All right, that's it from me, everyone. Thank you very much for that. Mikel Arteta speaking tomorrow morning at London Colney in his press conference ahead of Everton. So we'll get all the latest from him ahead of that trip to Goodison Park. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Until then, have a very good day, everyone. Enjoy yourselves, and I'll speak to you soon.